the title of this video, The Dual Nature of a Christian, because um, that's what the subject's about, the dual nature of a believer. Uh, can a believer sin? Uh, you bet ya. Uh, we're going to look at the scriptures and look at some lawful witnesses uh, to back up uh, the things I'm, I'm going to share. Um, hopefully I'm going to share some experience of, uh, that I've had and and some outlay some things which I hope and pray will be edifying and simple to understand. Um, what you're looking at on on the plate here is uh, a representation of God's heart, mind, and will for um, for all for all souls. First um, Timothy chapter two: uh, the Lord would have all men to be saved. That's past, present, and future. Uh, in the Old Testament, it was exactly the same Lord, the same God, the same will. So we're looking at um, all the souls, uh, all, all in one place, rather than spread out over time. Uh, in the centre is a representation of the saved, and. In, in the orange uh, ring and all those on the outside are unsaved uh, so the, the ring represents uh, the narrow way and the outside of the ring represents the broad way that leads to destruction in the beginning the Lord's will in the Old Testament was for his people solely uh, when he called, when the Lord called Abraham his his heart was to teach and bless his his people to make uh, Abraham's race or the race that Abraham was into a a nation into a people and God intended to teach his law to th these people and, and he named those people Israel as we know so God fulfilled his intention by in the old covenant teaching uh, his people the law so and preparing the way for the lawgiver the author the saviour the redeemer the king of Israel uh, the God of uh, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob to, to come in the flesh and die for the sins of all mankind who is and who came and who accomplished his uh, atonement on the cross and that is open today but in the Old Testament um, there was no atonement so uh, Considering the dual nature of a Christian, let, I'm going to start by looking and examining the Old Testament saints. Um, the twelve tribes of Israel, the people of Israel, the kings of Israel and, and their families. And all, all, all the people mentioned in the, in the Holy Scriptures and, and looking at their nature. So we have... Um, the Lord's heart, mind and will was for Israel, for his people, the Jew first and then for the Jew to share the word with the Gentiles or the rest of the world. So in the Old Covenant the, the Jews were sinful, they were sinners, but because of the Old Covenant they had a temporary covering, uh, sanctification, and they were um, justified or kept kept sanctified by keeping the commandments. Uh, I'm marking the up later on the screen where you can find the Old Testament commandments in Deuteronomy. So. They didn't have the Holy Spirit because the atonement hadn't been accomplished so the Jews were saved 
exactly the same way as, as Saints are safe today. Uh, but to keep their anointing of the Holy Spirit, they had to be obedient to the commandments. So they weren't born again, but they were justified. Abraham was justified by faith, by believing in, in the promise, believing in God and his faithful promise. And Abraham would have believed in Jesus Christ. Moses believed in Jesus Christ and the faithful promise. All the prophets believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and, and the atonement to come. And that's believing in, in the atonement to come is what, what saved Israel. So in the Old Testament we have uh, the saved believer and then the ungrafted um, backsliding G with the rest of the world. So it, the, G, he, uh, the Israelite was either in fellowship, keeping the commandments, or he'd fallen out of fellowship and he wasn't keeping the commandments and he was in, uh, under condemnation, under curses. So let me get a piece of paper because I've got a. Right. We can see there um, we've got uh, three circles. Okay. So um, each segment is a dispensation. So we have the Old Testament dispensation. The Prince's Dispensation, the Lord Jesus Christ, his ministry, and the New Testament, the New Covenant, the New and Everlasting Covenant. We call it Testament. So we have a Jew, Gentile. Gentile. And we put that as Israel as well. And Jerusalem. Yeah. So, in the old covenant we had the Jew first, the Gentile second. In the Lord's ministry his ministry was to the Jew first and the Gentile second. In the new covenant it's to the Jew first and the Gentile second. Now that's the Lord's heart for his people. This is not the uh, focus of the ministry because the focus of the ministry in the Old Testament was the Jew and then for the Jew to preach to the world uh, preach the word to the Gentile excuse my writing in the Lord's ministry it's exactly the same he came to um, save Israel and preach the kingdom to Israel uh, not not the Gentiles but the Lord intended for the Gentiles to be second so it was again the Jew first the Gentile followed so in the Old Testament we had Jews are uh, believing in the Messiah to come. Then we had from John the Baptist to Jesus' ministry, we had the Jews uh, repenting, waiting for the uh, Messiah to come, and then waiting for the faithful promise of the Holy Ghost once the Lord had 
um, laid down his life and take, took it up again. So there was people um, in line to be saved and then after the um, Pentecost and the Resurrection those people would have been saved that believed and then after there would have been uh, those who would have believed after the gospel was preached would have believed also so the transition from the old covenant the fulfilling of the new covenant and then the opening the way so the focus then is still the Jew first, the Gentile second, but the focus is the Gentile first and the Jew because it's the Gospels now to the, the Gentiles. So it's still to the Jew first and the Gentile second because that's the order, Israel the bosom, the rest of the world, but the focus today is to the Gentiles. But the gospel, the heart of the Lord is always for the Jew first, the Gentile second, because the Lord's a Jew. So the princes, the Lord Jesus Christ's ministry was for his own house. So he came to save his own house. And then after he saved his own house, or those that believed in his own house, the gospel opened up to the, the Gentiles, just like it would have once a, a faithful Jew, keeping the commandments, would have proselyted to a Gentile to, to um, hear the word and believe also. But the Gentile wouldn't have been able to go into the temple, but the Gentile would have been able to go and worship in the outer courtyard. That, that was the plan, that was the purpose. So it was the Jew first, and then anyone outside of Israel could be saved, or could, uh, could be sanctified, and, and would have been saved if they would have continued faithful and believed in, in, in Jesus to come like the faithful Jew, like Moses, like David if there's Gentiles in that day that would have believed also they would have been saved um, when, when they died they, uh, they would have gone into Abraham's bosom so that there would have been a, a twofold holding spiritual uh, holding place uh, and there, there was a division there as we know from the scriptures uh, Abraham's bosom and we know uh, that uh, the poor man uh, in the New Testament and the rich man were in hell and uh, the rich man cried out to go and warn his family, but he wasn't allowed because there was a veil. There was a. He asked for his um, tongue to be quenched, but uh, there were Abraham, somebody in 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 the heavenly place in under the ground said, uh, "Oh no, we can't come there. There's a division," and they couldn't go back and preach either because. It, they wouldn't have been there if they would have believed Moses, if they would have believed the prophets, they wouldn't have ended up in that place. So they wouldn't, there's no second chance. So that in that time, in the Old Testament time, there was uh, Abraham's bosom for the bad, and then uh, Abraham's bosom for the righteous. But the bad would have been waiting judgment. So after the death, burial, and resurrection, that division's gone, because then it's hell straight away, and then heaven up here because of Jesus, his uh, victory on the cross, his victory over death and hell. So that was split.
say. There we have it. And then in the New Testament it's the same. You either believe and you go straight to heaven or you don't believe and you die and you go straight to hell. So, the Lord's heart is always for the Jew first, then the Gentile. Same in the, in the first fruits. Let's put the first fruits. Then the New Testament saints. Old Testament saints. So I wanted to establish that just because of uh, the nature of uh, Israel and to show that it's still the same today. There's no, there's no difference, only, only in the fact the Lord Jesus Christ is Advent and his finished work, which ended the Old Testament and opened up the New and Everlasting Testament, New and Everlasting Covenant. So, as in the days of old, all the seed of Israel, let me read the scripture, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 13, Thou shalt not have in thy bag divers weights, a great and a small. Thou shalt not have in thine house divers measures, a great and a small. But thou shalt have a perfect and just weight, a, a perfect and just measure shalt thou have that thy days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy God, God giveth thee. So, to the Old Testament saints, left to their own devices, because we know from the seed of the sons of Israel they were sinners, and there was a pecking order, there was iniquity, there was pride, there was um, resentment, and just like there was in the in nature, in the apostles, in uh, and if you look for all the um, the line of the kings, all the the sin, the ups and downs, and the the uh, consequences uh, through the family line of of sin and the unjust measures, either uh, being, you know. Um, going too far to the right or too far to the left, it's an unjudged measure and people are the weights and they make unjust judgments so without the just measure, the Lord said thou shalt have a just measure that's only on condition in the Old Testament of keeping the commandments being obedient to the commandments um, as it is today but it's slightly different because the commandment is to believe in Jesus Christ but you can't that doesn't mean you can believe in Jesus Christ and break the commandments it, it means you believe and you've received Jesus Christ and that enables you to live the commandments to love thy neighbour as thyself and to share the gospel to share the word to share the the love of the Lord Jesus with other people, to warn people that's that's loving thy neighbour as thyself, that's fulfilling the law by uh, sharing the gospel. The Lord said go out into the highways and byways and the hedgerows and invite people in so his uh, house may be furnished with guests. It was the same in the Old Testament as it is in the New Testament. Uh, that's how we, we, we make a just measure because we have the Lord, we have the love of God, so we have charity, we look, look on people how the Lord looks on people. He is not a respecter of persons and we know that charity uh, seeketh not its own, doesn't seek its own, own glory or own and boasting, it, it does things purely for, for love, doing it for the right reasons. 
and it doesn't vaunt itself, it doesn't boast. Um, unlike the flesh, unlike mankind, it's full of sin, so it's either one measure or the other measure. You, you, it, um, mankind can't get the balance because he hasn't, he doesn't know Christ. So he's either one or the other, or trying to uh, balance, make a balance measure. But without Christ, you, you're unfounded, so you can't make a, a just measure. In truth, you can imitate it, but denying the Lord is the uh, the the un, the most unjust thing you can do. Um, let's look at Proverbs. 16 <clears throat> verse 11 the just weight and balance are the Lord's all the weights of the bag are his, are his work so we know the Lord is the only just weight and balance and all the weights are his bag every, everything he knows every weight and measure because he's a creator he's created every weight and measure and because he's just there's only one just standard weight and measure which, which all the other that's where injustice comes from by being outside uh, of that just measurement so we have then we have um, diverse weights and measures because we haven't got a just measure so that's a representation of uh, the human race uh, the old uh, the old uh, the old man the old nature uh, unjust. You're either you're either one or the other. You're either one extreme or the other, or somewhere in between, other than a, a just measure. Um, so in in the seed of Israel, uh, like uh, uh, Judah, and uh, as the tribes um, grew. Uh, Judah apostatized, uh, and if you noticed, Israel was always backsliding, always falling away. And um, when Judah, um, when they went into captivity, uh, Judah learned the tribe of Judah was accused by the Lord of um, going a whoring after Babylon and picking up bad habits and that caused the rest of Israel to follow suit and sin and that's where the problem started because uh, the big brother went astray and of course the little brothers followed and uh, that's when uh, there's a lot of sin problems in, in Israel and that uh, that caused a lot of problems to the lesser tribes, the smaller tribes, because the because Big Brother was out of the way. Uh, it affected it all, all all the seed down the line. So we can see in the Old Testament that uh, the old nature, and that nature is exactly the same today. The same sins of those days are quite possible they're in the hearts of man in these days I'm not saying they're in the heart of a believer because a born again believer has tasted the just measure so tasting the just measure you, you, you don't want to taste the unjust measures although you sin you don't go out of your way to, to like sin and you certainly we have the hindsight of the Old Testament Israelites who who um, perished, who got judged very severely as a warning. So we have all that hindsight to teach us. So these lessons are very unlikely to be repeated because we have that hindsight, that gift, gifted hindsight through Christ. We have that that blessing and foresight and. Uh, we have the love of God, so we're not going to do those sins. But it's quite possible to fall into sin and go back to um, resurrect past perhaps aggression, um, past sins, uh, 
so the nature the dual nature is still there like it was in the Old Testament because they had faith in the in the Lord and they were doing what the Lord wanted to in the spirit they were uh, walking justly they were living justly and they were making just just measurements so they weren't sinning but they still had they were still sinners they still had that old nature so they could still fall into sin but they would only do that if they stopped keeping the commandments so if they stopped keeping the commandments they would slip back into sin and they would forget God and turn their back on the Lord and they would lose that fellowship of the Holy Spirit it's exactly the same for a believer in today's dispensation who's received the Holy Spirit but if they stop keeping the commandment which is belief and to share the gospel they could transgress and they could lose the fellowship of the spirit and fall back into that old nature and sin which is why we have uh, the scripture we have the adv we have the advocate jesus christ who's um forgiven us all of our sins he's appropriated his atonement and washed all our sins in his precious blood his holy blood so our sins are washed are forgiven but our old nature is still existent it's still there because we're we're corrupted and that sin nature won't go until we put on incorruption and we only put on incorruption in through the resurrection and the life which is Jesus Christ and we only um, stay in fellowship with the Holy Spirit when we're obedient to the commandments when we're um, doing the things the Lord would have us do uh, to pray, read our scriptures and to uh, share the gospel and these things uh, keep us um, in the way, keep us blessed, keep us uplifted, keep us upheld um, but if we don't allow ourselves to be upheld we don't allow ourselves to be in the way we fall back into to old ways in, uh, sin, into our old nature, our sin nature so there is a dual nature within the believer just like there's a dual nature or one nature in the Old Testament saint and it's quite evident that uh, men, mankind are sinners and the uh, it's laid out in all the nature of man is laid out in the scriptures by all all the examples of backsliding Israel all the sins of idolatry murder all, all the sins that Israel have done um, because Israel sinned it's going to affect the rest of the world um, so that was the Lord's purpose for that's why he wanted uh, Israel saved because then from Israel we could go on to save the whole world by his righteousness, by his law, by his love, his kingdom by his perfect way, his just way uh, so he would have the Jew first. He called the Jews and made them a nation, then taught them the law, then, then prepared them for the, the way to come, Jesus Christ, that all may be saved. So it started in the heart, in the bosom of, uh, of his people. And that's why the, uh, Israel is the bosom of the world. Jerusalem's the holy city, the bosom of Israel like the Jews at the bosom of the world and the Gentiles are not an afterthought but they're um, second they're on the outside for the purpose of the heart saving that which is not in the heart so the Lord chose the heart to bring that which is outside the heart into the heart and that's why we have that's that's why the Messiah came, because he completed it, he fulfilled that task and brought all men unto himself. 
So um, the gospel today is still the Jew because it come by the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's always that order, Jew first, because Jesus is a Jew and he was a Jew in the beginning. So it's the Jew first, the gospel's for the Jew first, that's the order, and then the Gentile second. But in this dispensation, the focus is to the Gentile, but it's still the gospel to the Jew first, and then the Gentile second. It's just a different de dispensation because the Jew, Israel rejected the nation of Israel, the people of Israel rejected the Messiah. Although the seed, some seed were, were faithful, the whole nation as a nation rejected Christ. So it went to the Gentile nations because the Jews broke their covenant. The Lord didn't uh, cut off Israel completely. He still kept them in their covenant for their father's sake, for the promises of the old covenant. So the Lord's kept his covenant for the, for the Jews and the Gentiles. But even though they broke it, they're not out of his will. They're still in his will. The Jew first, and then the Gentile second. And uh, that was that's fulfilled. So it's the same today as it was in the Old Testament. And it's the same with uh, sin, the sin nature. Uh, mankind's sinful. We're all sinful. And uh, all Christians are sinners. There's not a saint on this earth that has not sinned. Or, or is a sinner. Um, if you're not living by faith, you're sinning. So if you're not 100%, 100% of the time, believing in the Lord and living the gospel in this dispensation, you're sinning. If you're admitting to do the things, um, omitting the things you should be doing, you're sinning. If you do things you shouldn't be doing, you're not doing that what you should be doing, so therefore you're sinning. Anything without faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is sin. So everybody sins. It's not okay to sin, but we sin because we're sinful, we're corrupted. And that's why we have a merciful Saviour and the atonement. And like the scripture says, if we confess our sins, God is just to forgive us our sins. And if we say we have no sin, we call God a liar, because only, God, only the Lord is holy and sinless. So we do have um, a dual nature, and we can fall into sin, and we can fall out of fellowship, just like the Old Testament. Jews and, and we can be restored back just like the Old Testament Jews um, I'm not saying we you can go and push your luck because you could um, end up being destroyed uh, physically but you can't lose your salvation in this dispensation once you're, you're saved I, I, I don't believe you can I don't believe it's possible um, I don't believe you would. I'm not saying it isn't possible, but I don't believe you would or you could. And I don't think the Lord would save somebody and then, then allow them to lose their salvation because otherwise we'd have all lost our salvation. Uh, the Lord died once to save us once, forever. Um, but we do sin. So that is basically the dual nature of a Christian. That, uh, you can see the examples in the Old Testament of saints, you can see the example in your family, you still got that, you're still the same person, although you've received the Lord's righteousness, you're still um, that same sinner, but you've, you're now living with the Lord's righteousness and in the Lord's righteousness, for the Lord's righteousness to keep you out of your sinful nature so you're living in the spirit it's, you're not living in the after the flesh so you can live for the spirit and stumble in the flesh 
but continue on living in the spirit and then because we you know we we sin on a daily basis so if you're living solely for the flesh you're not living for the spirit if you're living solely for the spirit and temporarily um, falling down in the flesh in, the, in your old nature and confessing your sin that's not living for the flesh if your focus is, is, is Christ and the gospel you're living for the spirit but you will sin so if you sin once that doesn't mean you're living for the flesh and you've lost everything that means you need to confess your sin and, and continue on living for the spirit and then the Lord's just to forgive us and, and to bless us and to keep us in the way. But if we stop being in the way, we fall down in the flesh. We, we, we fall out of fellowship with the Spirit and we will return to... We'll be sifted by the devil and we will sin. Uh, temptation will come and if we're not, we have, we're, we're not focused on the Lord... What, what chance does anyone have? What chance does the old nature have without without uh, the victory in Christ to resist that temptation? And that can happen to a believer who, who falls out of fellowship and they can get overpowered and they will fall. They will fall into sin. Um, but that doesn't mean that you go into hell if you fall into sin. It means you need to be restored. You need to go to the Lord. And you need to confess and say, Lord, I've made a mistake. Um, I'm sorry. I need. I need. Um, I want. I want to continue. I want picking up, and the Lord will pick you up. So he's faithful to His promise. His atonement's complete. So He will restore you. He's faithful to His word. He's given us a, a lawful witness. He's given us more than one lawful witness. Two, three four lawful witnesses in the scriptures we have one law giver and he's given us many lawful witnesses of his truth and the truth is that we're sinful and believers sin there's not a believer that doesn't sin any, any believer that says he's never sinned is a, a sinner is a liar is deceived he's proud and and they're calling god a liar so that person's a sinner and uh they will um, perish, they're in transgression uh, if they're not saved and uh, they're um, professing to believe and saying that there is no sin once once they've believed that they don't sin and they haven't believed and they haven't been saved that person will perish and that person's a liar and a sinner if that person is born again and is saved and believe that they can't sin they they're in transgression they're in they're um extremely high minded on one end of the seesaw lifted up they're not um they're not in the way because they call God a liar because uh, the scripture is quite clear that we're sinners we've always been sinners uh that doesn't make it okay to carry on sinning willfully and live after sin and return back to our old way that we didn't know any different before we knew Jesus so now we know the way and we can keep our eyes single to the glory we can um, we've walked in we, we've, we've believed we've received then we've walked daily in that belief and we've grown and we've learned and we've walked in the spirit and tasted the spirit and we've also been through the fiery trial we've all sinned we've all fallen short of the glory and the perfection that we desire in our hearts to to live but we're sinners because we've fallen uh, some some people are more sinful than others uh, uh, um, before I was saved, I was uh, uh, the youngest of uh, two sons. Uh, my brother was four years older, and uh, now my brother was 
the apple of my mum and dad's eye. Um, my mum come from a very um, unfair background. My dad come from a very spoilt background. So my mum's and dad's aims were to raise us equally, my brother and I, and with those um, balance my mum was trying to put right, but because my mum was a sinner, you go from one ex you can go the danger is you can go from one extreme to the other. But my mum was extremely blessed and she she raised my brother and I as quite fairly and circumstantially as well. Uh, not just for the sake of being fair but uh, justly. My mum and dad were quite just, although they were sinners. So I didn't resent my brother. I looked up to my brother, uh, being the youngest. Although we, you know, we we fought like cat and dog, but we were very close, um, and that gave gave me the ability to look up to people. Uh, but I was a sinner, nevertheless, and without Christ, I was. Um, I could be quite um, violent, angry. That was because of um, abuse inflicted on me, and I wasn't aware of it ever happening. So I had that um, angry nature because um, what was done to me, uh, and that was born. Live, li the frustrations there. The injustice has been done. So that injustice is. Um, wanting to find its way out so I was had a very sinful desire and I wasn't sure where it come where this nature come from only to discover later on in my life where where when it all unfolded after I was saved and I discovered uh, what the Lord had atoned for what the Lord had helped me live through and live and and overcome and understand and grow in my understanding in my walk with him uh, so I knew I was a, a reprobate a sinful person I didn't know why but I was and I knew I was and I lied and I'd done things my own way and I would um, have a self-destructive nature, um, addiction, abuse, uh, just to cope, just to switch off and cope, cope with uh, pain and frustration and things I didn't understand what were going on in me. So um, after I was saved and received the love of the Lord and the love of God the Father, believing in His Son, tasting that joy in that the Holy Spirit I had the contrast I had now I had Christ now I could live for the Spirit but I still had that old nature and that old nature um, soon soon returned when I stopped doing the calling on my first love because after I called on my first love the Lord Jesus Christ and was saved I didn't think about tomorrow or the next day and I didn't realise I didn't even consider that I had to continue praying continue studying continue walking continue growing in that fellowship and that's how I learned that's the fiery trial Christian goes through um, you, you start innocently you start a, a, a baby and you you're brand new and you're born in the spirit and you're you're carried you're blessed richly and you're carried on the uh, like the scriptures say uh, the, about the tribe of Benjamin riding on the ox um, we are we're like Israel we're like Jacob we are, we're, we're blessed we're we're upheld we're gracefully 
given that, that spirit, given those gifts, given the abilities that we never ever thought possible, especially if you're um, a very weak person, um, handicapped in some way, and then suddenly you can comprehend what what your handicap is. You have the Holy Spirit, and you you've learned you learn wisdom, and you learn you, the Lord teaches you knowledge and how to apply that knowledge and grow in understanding and the Holy Spirit is an incredible teacher can it, it, um, expand your mind, expand your heart expand, it, just magnify your life experience um, so to have not have that and the, the contrast and then to walk in that spirit daily you soon you soon fall flat on your face. You, you you soon fall short because you you don't have the knowledge. You don't have the f hindsight or the experience. And if you if you're a safe believer and you come to faith in your closet, in your own personal life, and you you're not around um, a strong body of Christians. If you're fortunate enough to have been uh, saved around Christians, I wasn't. I was saved out in the wilderness so I didn't have anything, I didn't have anyone, I didn't have any the internet and I didn't know of any Christians uh, locally let alone worldwide so I was completely alone and uh, out in the woods and there the, the, but I had the Lord always faithfully at my side but I soon learned that um, I could sin again, I could still sin and when I did sin and fall, fall down I didn't know that I could get back and because I didn't have any uh, scripture discipline, I didn't have the knowledge of the scriptures of the finding myself approved, laying hold of my salvation and then working out my salvation and receiving, you know, putting on the salvation that I'd received and laying hold of it and then walking in it. I didn't have that. I had, I had, that's what um, believers have to go through. I, 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 I've um, had a particularly hard time and I'm sure many brothers and sisters do. Um, they don't have the hindsight, they don't have the, somebody around to take them under the wing. And I think, um, in my case, that the, that that's a wise purpose because it uh, brings you closer to the Saviour, brings you closer to the Lord. Uh, that experience, um, I, I don't know if that is, is purpose for everyone. I, I think a lot of the things I went through could have been avoided, but uh, I'm not resentful there just wasn't anybody there so I hope that um, I, c I can be that uh, person to someone even if it's just one person I can be that uh, person to steer them away from that those pitfalls and the dangers that you can you can stray into as a, as a, a believer, a safe believer and then f end up with um, Satan sticking your head down the toilet and you're not realising what's going on to you, what's going on with you and then you think you, you've you lost your salvation or you've lost your you've lost your um, eternal life and you, you, you're not saved anymore and if you don't know you're saved if you believe and you appropriate the, the Lord's atonement and you taste his love and his joy and then you fall away from that and, if it, and your eyes not single to the glory anymore, and your heart, and then your whole body, your whole life becomes full of darkness. You forget that salvation you've tasted, and you forget that you've received it, and then Satan will put the will, pull the wool over your eyes, or pull a put a bag over your head, and torment you, and it and possibly destroy you, uh, if the Lord were to allow that. Uh, but um, the Lord, the Lord has us in his in his hands, in his heart, in his mind. He's 
he's ever mindful of his children and 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 in my case he had me all you know from beginning to end from the start all the way up to the the completion of of that salvation I've received in him by him and from him so if you you are um a sinful backsliding Christian and you, you're out of the way and you think you've lost your salvation uh, you can't lose your salvation it, 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 it's just a prayer away and the Lord can bring you right up to speed in a jiffy in a, in a it just um, as quickly as you can pray as quickly as the Lord can answer and he does answer instantly when, when it's uh, humble and it's a, a right prayer a righteous prayer it's always instantly answered uh, unless it's something complicated and something you have to wait for but usually when you're in need the Lord the Lord's there to answer your prayers um, so we, we we can sin um, depending on your family background um, depending on your your environmental circumstances you you come with a nature you come packaged with all your baggage now you might might be walking in the spirit and not and and that baggage is covered and that that's a shadow and that that's not something you're walking in you're walking in your new spirit your new nature your new creature and that old nature is just a shadow on the ground because you're now walking in the light you're walking by the light of Jesus Christ but you can um, turn from that light you can stumble you can become inactive or despondent or well, there's so many different uh, tests and trials you can go through that you could uh, turn away or you know take your eye off the prize take your eye off the glory and you you can fall into sin or you can stand there looking in, in into sin you know, in an instant, it can happen momentarily, just like a blip. Um, I think uh, as time goes on as a Christian, you, the Lord um, establishes you, he stabilises you, he makes you more resilient, he makes you, um, through your trials and experience, he's, he's, he, he's chastised you. And he's disciplined you, and he's um, led you and brought you this far, and uh, he's done that through his atonement, through the, the sanctification of the spirit. Spirit, what you've received is what you're realizing, is what you're going realizing on a daily basis. That victory, that that victory which is complete. And that victory, which is you're you're receiving on a daily day-to-day -day basis, but on a day-to-day -day basis, you can fluctuate. You could be down the shops, and uh, you could get um, barged in the queue, or taunted, or some contentious eruption outbreaks, and you could lose your rag just just for a moment, and then you could confess that. In, in the next moment and be back in fellowship with the with the Lord or you could fall down on flat on your face and then feel so ashamed for sinning that you you won't confess you too you don't want to go and face it you would rather stay in the in the darkness so you'll remain in your sin and then one sin will lead to another one and the more and the, and the more more you sin, the less likely it is you're going to get up and pray. So you'll you'll get caught in a in a rut, and the Lord will leave you in that rut. But He's outstretched, and He wants to pull you out of that rut it, as soon as you slip into it. Um, and and as and as time goes by, you don't fall in those ruts. You, you your foot's just sl perhaps sliding, and then you you avoid it. And you avoid your old the, the old pattern because the Lord's given you the victory over it through perhaps some things need trial and error, other things are just taken away instantly. Um, 
I had an illness to understand and and one, uh, once um, once I was saved that illness that uh, disability the symptom severity was severely uh, reduced just for being saved but I still had that disability and then over time and understanding and knowledge I, I, I kind of outgrew it but that was by the grace of the Lord it wasn't instant although I received it instantly it was through experience that I learned what it was that the Lord had done for me and I'd received so I, I, I grew to understand what the Lord had worked out for me and where a particular victory had been granted in my life that I'd received that he was handing to me that he was leading me through to teach me so I I, I learned the hard way from uh, my my old sin nature my um, wickedness and my transgressions and my my lack of knowledge lack of script the scripture knowledge and all these things keep us in the way all these things feed the the um, the new creature uh, whereas if we're not doing those things we're feeding the old nature we can become if if you're hanging around in a even in a workplace if you're in a work environment you can pick up the especially if it's one full of bad language you can pick up the old I, I've been in work situations people are just waiting for you to swear they're waiting for you to fall down and then there's times you think uh, you, you people think uh, oh you're you're holier than thou and you don't sin and then you think then you're tempted to just swear one day to just show that you're human and that, that you know that's another sin because you're not showing the light of Christ you're showing you're giving into temptation so uh, sin is always before a believer even um, steadfast believers and I, I wouldn't consider myself um, steadfast I mean I'd I aim to be steadfast and I pray to be steadfast but I, ca I can't say um, I'm a, um, a well-rounded disciplined believer I'm getting there slowly uh, but even the, the most disciplined experienced elder brother sister can sin can fall down to sin and sin and then have to be restored restored back to where they fell from no one is um, beyond reproach no one is without sin in, in, in the presence in the sight of a just holy God um, so that teaching wherever it comes from it's not from the holy word it's uh, it's, er it's erroneous it's in error um, believers do sin um, as, as I've already mentioned all through just read the uh, scriptures if you don't if you're not sure because it's uh, apparent throughout the the Old Testament and the New Testament if you look carefully although the focus is more on uh, the Spirit the Holy Spirit you don't you don't um, see so much backsliding uh, but th this is the the early church uh, we know that there was awful sins in the camp and they were coming from very sinful backgrounds idolatry uh, sexual pagan rituals uh, sons sleeping with their mothers you know that was forbidden in the Old Testament that was a uh, that was worthy of being stoned um, there were so many sins in the, the New Testament just to look just to look beyond and see that uh, people fell into sin Paul had to deal with sin Paul had to deal with the the Corinthians and uh, the backsliding the sins even sins in uh, 
his own people, even Paul sinned, even Peter sinned. Uh, so if the apostles sin, you know, um, the Lord rebuked Peter many times. Uh, and after he was saved, Paul rebuked him publicly because he, he wanted to um, remain with the uh, side with the Jews uh, and not mix with the Gentiles. So, you know, there is the old nature even in the apostles that had to be dealt with um, and was dealt with. And so we know from the scriptures that they sinned and possibly sinned again. Um, and if the apostles sin, a believer will sin more, you know, ten times as much. Uh, but I'm not making an excuse to go and sin and remain in your sin because you can't, you know, God can't tolerate sin at all in any degree, uh, which is why we, uh, He sent His Son to die, being sinless, and and, and we've received that, um, we've received His sinlessness, we've received His Son, we've received our Lord and Saviour. Therefore, there is no sin in us but we can positionally fall back into our old nature and resurrect the old man and sin. Um, so I'm going to close there. And uh, I'd like to close in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.